Seems familiar that we started the video out like this last week. I was supposed to get this, uh, not this week actually, it was supposed to come in a little bit longer, but uh, for some reason it came in quite fast. Holy mother of bubble wrap! Man, this is in really good shape. There's a little arrow that says pointing upwards, so I'm just gonna do it like that. Not that I don't think it changes anything. Right hand drive steering rack is a go. So yeah, this is really cool. What I think JD did is he bought a Dash 8 and uh, fitting, stainless I believe, welded it on and then whatever the excess was, he probably drilled it out. That's the new subframe. I'll just have to buy two dash AN push lock with some uh, push lock hose and see if I have to buy a Earl's power steering line with uh, two fittings and some line. I'll have to see if I can make this this line work somehow. Definitely have to unbend it somehow. But uh, yep, yeah, I'm gonna leave that for now. Worst case, I have one power steering line. If one of you have a power steering line for a uh, 3SGE beams into an Alteza, hit me up. I got the uh, old subframe out. And uh, it's starting to snow outside. And it's been starting to snow outside. And, uh, anyways, got the new right hand drive subframe in. Pretty pumped about that. Ooh. As I was saying right there, I'm gonna need a Dash 8 AN fitting, uh, push lock style, and I'm gonna need one on this thing right here. And basically the low pressure side just gonna go down, and then boop, right there. We got some snowmobiles going on in the house. No idea who it is. And then for the high pressure, it's gonna be right here. I have to buy a M16 times 1.5, 6 a, uh, two 6 AN. I need to buy two because one goes on the power steering pump. So basically, I need to get a 90 degree Earl power steering fitting. It's gonna go that way, probably more a little bit more up, and then have the high pressure Earl power steering line go around here, and then just come up to the pump. And then that power steering is going to be sorted. The coolant, I'm still thinking what I'm going to do because now I bought a Willwood brake pedal that's coming into the engine bay. So I'll have two Willwoods double right there. Boom. So basically, I got to eliminate this or make it smaller. So the way GD made this was this is part of your cooling system. Basically, you fill your coolant here, and it's, your, it's the highest point of the car, right? And then right here is your expansion tank. So it's two different, two different uh, boxes made out of one, if you want. So coolant system, <coughs> overflow into this fitting right here, and then once it gets too hot, it blows out, out of this little hole. I don't think that's legal. So what I'm going to think is, uh, what I'm thinking is just cut this expansion tank off and then maybe I'll have room to run uh, this section right here I still have room for the Willwoods I don't know yet I have to see once I get the Willwoods once I install the Willwoods how it's gonna go I was also thinking I could mount this little baby here somehow I don't know, I don't know 
what I want to do yet. So the rod doesn't have a coolant cap. It's on this thing. So he fills the, the rod and the, system, the whole coolant system through that. The way I think he did it was these were the fittings for the, uh, I believe these were the coolant lines to the turbo from uh, and returned from the turbo. And these were going to the heater core and back of the engine. I think that's how he was doing it. And this is a little <clears throat> overflow that goes to the rad. Pretty cool system, honestly. As you guys can see, my little gas pedal thing. I think the Willwoods are going to pop out right here, right in the middle of this um, corner. I don't know what that's going to do to the uh, the pedal inside the car. It might be a bit like crooked, um, but I mean that's easily fixed with a couple of shims. Uh. Yeah, next thing. I'm gonna make the brackets for the seat with the seat rails. Uh, and I think I'm gonna take this apart here. I'm gonna cut this off and I'm gonna make something better for this. Um, it's hard to show you when I'm alone there, but this steering, these two points here go to about where the bolt is, maybe a little bit more forward. Um, I guess I could make like a shim, but I'm just gonna chop this off and I'm gonna make something uh, a little nicer, I mean, like I don't have much to do with this car right, so making it right-hand drive was just putting my touch on it. So it's starting to snow pretty bad, um, and uh, I gotta have to clean this when I get home from hockey probably, unless my dad comes to do it while I'm gone to hockey. But I'm not gonna film anything else today just because I'm going to hockey later, and it is snowing and I'm gonna have to shovel that and put past the snow blur later, so. I mean, I did a pretty good big thing. I put the subframe in. I kind of aligned the car a bit. I tried putting my 17th that I had, uh, my work ones that were on the back of the car. Right now the car is just on jack stands. Um, but they were rubbing on the caliper, even with a, I think this is a five mil spacer. And then I tried putting the other space, cause I have two of these. I put both of them on the same wheel and it was like just touching. I was like, all right, so I'm gonna have to get like Cause I think I want to run 17s in the front. These are 18s. I might run these actually, I don't know yet. I don't know what I'm doing. All I know is that um, if I'm running 18s, I need to get two tires. If I'm running 17s, I also need to get two tires, but if I run the 17s in the front, I have to get spacers. But yeah, pretty pumped. Uh, as you guys can see, subframe in, rack is in column is all bolted up except for the mount that I need to make at the top and I started aligning the car a bit but yeah hope you guys are as stoked as I am on this because this is I can't wait to drift this with the beams Whoop, up, up. <laughs> so uh, I was working on the car and I went to pick up my camera to film and the battery light shone red and then it just shut off just because it was so cold um, I want to show you guys some stuff that I'm going to have to buy. Power steering cooler, power steering lines, power steering fittings. Um, I'm going to have to get two power steering fittings, the low pressure side, the high pressure power steering fittings, T-bolt one, because I'm missing one T-bolt clamp, just some rubber hose. And then that's it. Well, besides, I need to buy injectors, paint to paint the cars, stuff like that. It's not, let's not even get into that. Anyways, I'll, I'm going to go show you guys what I did today. It's raining outside. So I went ahead and I uh, chopped off that bracket that I had tack welded. Um, and I created this little thing right here. Basically, I welded some nuts inside here of a tubing. And then I, I made this cross tubing just to make a structural, uh, structurally sound. It's got bolts underneath, so this thing, this little piece can come off, actually. Um, and now I just need to notch it in back. I gotta notch it like this, because this is actually just gonna go, whoop, right here. I don't know if I can demonstrate that. So this is, a little <laughs> this is really heavy. So it's basically I gotta notch it so it fits in there. But right now you can kind of get a mental idea. I also installed Fred's seat in my car with these brackets. Um, 
I don't fit in this seat. <laughs> My ass is too big, so if I get a Sparkle Sprint, I'm gonna have to get a Sparkle Sprint L, which is the Sparkle Sprint Large. And also, I don't like how high it is. Uh, right now, we're on the highest setting on both sides. So what I think I'll do is I'll be taking the Sparkle Sprint that's on the Evo right there. This Sparkle Sprint Junior 2008, I believe. It's a little bit wider and I fit in it really good, so I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the side mount brackets and uh, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to have to add more brackets underneath and uh, get the seat exactly where I want it to be. But uh, yeah, it's raining outside. Can't believe it. But we're one step closer to the uh, right hand drive conversion. I should have the pedal next weekend. Uh, I think this is going to be a lot nicer, a lot more aesthetically clean. And then we'll have one bracket to make in the back. Uh, then we're going to have to figure something out to cover that hole. And then for the other holes, I'm just going to weld plates in place. I put this little uh, this kid plate off a of BMW, so I don't ruin the windshield when I'm when I was grinding or I'm going to be welding. I'll take Fred's seat out before I start welding. So me and Alex are going to be doing a podcast soon through Evolution Plus, his other company. Um, so we're calling it EvoCast. Basically, we're going to be talking to a whole bunch of different people who drive Evos, who modify Evos. I don't think we're going to stick to just Evos, but at the beginning, we, we at least want to just like interview people that are building Evos and stuff. So, so stay tuned for that. I have a big, I have a lot of plans for next weekend. It's a long weekend. I'm off on the Monday because it's family day in Ontario. So I got Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Saturday, I gotta go pick up uh, my engine mounts for the beams, my wheel wood pedal in Messina, New York. And then I also have to, I play hockey at night. I think I'm gonna be doing the seed brackets of the Sparkle Sprint Junior that I have on the Evo to fit in there so I can get a better bearing. I'm also gonna like probably put the dash in just to uh, try and get the steering wheel like as center as possible. So yeah and then Sunday uh, I don't know what we're doing yet probably um, gonna try and do that first Evo cast with uh, Alex and our, our special guests which you guys will find out. Fred's moving in next weekend so I don't know if he's moving in on Saturday or Sunday we'll have to figure it out. So Fred's gonna be here more often because he's gonna be living with me and so is Gab. So is my girlfriend, so um, expect more footage from Dory Fred on his Miata. I guess when he's bored, he'll just come in the garage and smoke a smoke a smoke and do do some stuff on his car. And uh, that'll probably motivate me to do some stuff on my car. Also, there's a lot of, like we've been getting into playing Fortnite for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, we might film a couple games and put it up on, on another channel or whatever. We're not sure yet. Like, we're just... Take it day by day, I guess, you know? So yeah, expect more footage coming from me and Dory Fred, and we'll put Gab. Gab has a little project that he wants to do, so stay tuned for that. I think I'm just gonna concentrate on the little stuff I can do for the Lexus, like power steering lines, putting the engine in, getting it uh, wired up, and then it'll be just uh, finalize the seats, what seats I wanna put in this. Do I wanna get a competition seat for the Evo? Probably. The Evo still needs to get a cage done, I'm not gonna worry about the cage till the car actually runs. So I gotta get injectors from Carl, KMP. If you guys watched last week's video, you saw I was, I was messing around with the eBay E46 angle kit and uh, I ordered myself a set just for, I think it was like 60 bucks shipped or whatever. Um, it gave me a, quite a decent amount of angle. Still gotta do the front control arms though on the Evo. Uh, and I ordered a set just for now. So the plan is to run the eBay kit here like that and eventually uh, when we go down to Florida this winter, I wanna get re in contact with SLR so I can bring my car over, put it on, on the, I don't know if they have a lift or whatever, but definitely get in contact with them and see what we can work out. Um, try to get insane, insane angle on the Evo. That would be just very sweet. Just like I said, just concentrate on the little stuff that I can that's in my control. Money's coming in as fast as possible, but the best way you guys can help me is uh, like, comment, subscribe to my videos. 
or if you want you can shoot over at my Patreon, the link's in the description below. You can uh, cop some merch off my website, northside.tigtail.com, where the link's in the description. Add me on Snapchat, add me on Instagram, Poirier4. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, though I don't put anything on Twitter, it's Boss Poirier4. Gonna finalize the Evo and the Lexus for this summer. If you guys enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and uh, leave a comment down below. And I'll see you guys next week. Peace out. When I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. <laughs>